I'm going to go back and start over then. I was, I was just saying that I agree with Dr. Steinmetz and Harrop and that the literature is very cloudy on this subject. And basically, you can find literature to support any treatment which you prefer in this particular patient population. My particular goal is to point out that odontoid screw fixation is a relatively low morbid uh, procedure and can be highly effective for certain fractures uh, and stabilizing these fractures and returning patients to uh, mobility. Uh, odontoid fractures typically have a bimodal distribution. Again, we're focusing here upon the uh, older patient population. Number of uh, treatments have been discussed already. I'll skip over this portion. We've already talked about many of these points in that there's a higher complication rate with non-operative versus many of the uh, operative uh, treatments in uh, retrospective uh, studies. So in terms, I'm going to skip ahead and go to the uh, uh, benefits of the anterior approach. So in particular indications for odontoid screw fixation will be type 2 odontoid fractures and shallow type 3. Dr. Harrop has already uh, alluded uh, upon the uh, differentiation between uh, a true type 3 and a shallow type 3 with the involvement of the facet complex. Uh, it's important that these fractures be reducible, and I think it's particularly important that we're treating an acute fracture, unlike that first slide which Dr. Harrop showed. Advantages of odontoid screw fixation is it's going to preserve uh, motion at the C12 uh, articulation. It um, is going to spare cervical rotation. There's no need for bone graft and morbidity of bone grafting. Been a number of series uh, reporting significant uh, complications with harvesting a biliac crest autograph for posterior C12 arthrodesis. There's no need for uh, post op uh, immobilization in many of these patients, can reduce uh, morbidity. And I believe it's a less traumatic procedure in comparison to posterior approaches. Unlike the data that uh, Dr. Harrop showed, I believe that there are uh, a number of good series uh, in the literature showing that odontoid screw fixation can provide for a solid fusion or stable non-union. One large series from Affelbaum in 2000, uh, 114 patients, 88% uh, fusion rate um, in fractures less than six months old. So again, this is key. We're looking at treating uh, acute fractures. Uh, this fusion rate was independent of age, sex, number of screws, and uh, degree of direction of fracture displacement. In a subsequent uh, publication from this same institution, they did note that two, they felt that two screws was beneficial to one screws, and they particularly looked at the elderly population greater than age 75 and noted the 80% fusion rate in this particular group. It is important to note that this series did note a uh, dysphagia rate of approximately 30% in patients older than age 70. Most of these patients, the dysphagia had resolved by uh, six weeks post-op. I think the, um, the important thing with odontoid screw uh, fixation, I think the, the, the thing that really uh, clouds the literature is there is some uh, tech, technical expertise that's needed, and there's some pitfalls that uh, one can fall into with the placement of odontoid screw. And as a result, uh, the results in many series may be poor. Uh, in terms of uh, the pitfalls, I think the most important thing is, are you going to be able to uh, obtain a good uh, trajectory for your odontoid screw. So your odontoid screw, you need to start at the base of uh, C2 with a trajectory toward the tip of the odontoid. And the image uh, depicted to the right, this patient had a significant cervical thoracic kyphosis, which prevented this particular surgeon from placing the screw in the odontoid. Uh, oftentimes, a patient's body habitus uh, limits the trajectory on the screw. So here's a nice thin patient. This shows your optimal uh, screw trajectory for an odontoid screw. Take the patient with a barrel chest, however. The patient with a barrel chest obstructs this trajectory, and as a result, you're likely going to get poor fixation and likely a failure. So this particular patient would not be a good choice uh, for odontoid screw. And these are all things that need to be considered before going to the operating room. The insertion site. It's important to have this insertion site uh, at the uh, base of the odontoid. This particular image here shows a, a screw which was started uh, too ventral on the 
uh, body of the dens, it's important to get under that lip of C2, actually go through the C2-3 disk space for your starting point. That provides a solid uh, cortical surface in front to prevent screw pullout. Sorry, suddenly I cannot advance my slides. Can I get some assistance advancing these slides? Oblique fractures, next slide. Uh, oblique fractures, uh, it's important to uh, consider the obliquity of uh, fractures. Uh, anterior oblique fractures, as depicted on the left, are particularly troublesome. The odontoid has a propensity to fall ventrally as the screw is placed, and uh, subsequently, uh, many series have showed uh, significant issues with uh, fusion rates and displacement uh, after uh, odontoid screw fixation. Next slide. So this is an example of uh, the odontoid displacing anteriorly as a result of the anterior oblique fracture. So this would be a fracture that would avoid uh, placing uh, odontoid screw and consider, uh, more likely consider a posterior arthritis. Next slide. And then the uh, last point is uh, it's very important to obtain uh, fixation in the distal cortex of the odontoid. Without that fixation in the strong portion, the strong distal cortex, these screws are likely to pull out or have issues uh, with failure. Next slide. So in summary, uh, odontoid screw fixation is a safe, low morbidity surgery that allows for stabilization and early mobilization of odontoid fractures. It's important to consider the screw trajectory preoperatively and uh, have caution with anterior oblique fractures. Next slide. Next slide. I believe that uh, this is, I had one additional slide which has been lost. I personally feel that the benefits of an anterior uh, approach in these patients is it's a lower morbidity. This is, this is an easier patient, uh, this is an easier procedure for these patients. It's generally, uh, you know, it's in supine position versus the prone position, which I think there's some benefit to. It's a shorter procedure in comparison to a posterior uh, arthrodesis. Uh, less uh, trauma tissue healing uh, issues with an anterior approach than a, a, post, a posterior approach. Less issues with infection. I think it allows for early mobilization in these in these patients. If you're at if you're able to place an adequate screw and stabilize this, it allows for early mobility. No need for an external orthosis. So, in comparison of the the options, I think for select patients where you can place an odontoid screw, I think this is the most optimal treatment. Uh, for this uh, patient population. Thank you again for your... your